Yo, thank you for listening, downloading, and subscribing to the latest edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. I'm 12 Kyle. Check this out. On this podcast, I'm going to deviate from what I normally do. Um, If you follow the podcast, you know that I never, hardly ever talk uh, current events. You know, I just don't do that. I leave that for the podcast. But something I wanted to talk about, and I figured, you know, hey, I might as well throw this one out there. A little bonus uh, podcast for you listeners out there. Um, I wanted to talk about Colin Kaepernick. Um, As many of you know, or if you don't know, uh, at the time of this recording, uh, Colin Kaepernick and the NFL, or shall I say the NFL, settled a grievance that Colin Kaepernick and his former teammate Eric Reed had against them. Uh, the grievance basically said that they, the NFL had colluded uh, to keep Colin Kaepernick out of the NFL. Um, and when this happened, it's been a little more than a week now. So I figured I wanted some time. I wanted the dust to settle before I started talking about it. Um, Cause I've seen a lot and I've heard a lot of people, you know, kind of giving their two cents on it or what have you. Uh, so I'm gonna give you mine. Um, again, you know, I think one of the most important things to do when you're talking about, uh, this story is state the facts, right? So no cap, just facts, <laughs> One of the facts is he filed a grievance. Um, He basically said, hey, the NFL has plotted. These owners have colluded, you know, in some way, shape or form to keep me from playing, to keep me from being gainfully employed. Uh, If you know Colin Kaepernick or you're familiar with his story uh, after the 2016 season, he could not. And did not find an opportunity after he opted out of the contract that he had with the uh, San Francisco 49ers. And so he basically said, hey, the owners have colluded to keep him out. So why do you ask that is? So, again, if you're not really familiar with Colin Kaepernick, Colin Kaepernick earlier in 2016 during a preseason game uh, was spotted sitting on the bench during the national anthem. A reporter came over and said, hey. We noticed that you were sitting down during the national anthem. Why were you sitting down? And he proceeded to tell them about what he thought about the national anthem and, you know, his subsequent feelings toward that. And he didn't feel like he needed to stand for the national anthem. And after that, uh, he did it again. And I think after that, after that other, I think it was the third preseason game, uh, he spoke with a veteran and a veteran said, well, hey, don't sit down during the national anthem as a gesture of appreciation. What you should do is take a knee. So he took a knee. And subsequently, every game that season, he kneeled before the national anthem. And not only was he kneeling, but other players were kneeling as well. That's a fact. What this was, was a silent protest. Um. It was a silent protest and Colin Kaepernick stated that very eloquently, by the way, that, you know, he wasn't disrespecting the flag. What he was trying to do was bring attention to systematic oppression uh, of people who look like him, black and brown people, people of color and bring attention to police brutality. You know, at the time, you know, there were these high profile cases of, you know, police officers here in the United States uh, basically getting away with murder uh, of citizens, black citizens, and there was nothing basically happening to those cops. They were walking away. And, you know, that was a part of his thing. He wanted to bring attention to it. That's a fact. No cap. Um, And when I say no cap for you squares out there, that means no lie. <laughs> That's what the, the, the young kids are saying now. Um, but anyway, 
that's what he was doing. He wanted to bring attention to the systematic oppression and the police brutality. Right. And again, here's a fact. It was never about the flag. But. People. Took the fact that he was <laughs> not, quote unquote, standing and saluting the flag, that it was a sign of disrespect. And he was being unpatriotic. And at that point, you had people from all walks of life, even the commander in tweet weighing in on Colin Kaepernick. And this was 2016. And so that year goes by and he finishes the season. And then after that, he cannot find work. And Colin Kaepernick, keep in mind, is not some bum quarterback. He is a guy that just two years prior to that led his team to the Super Bowl. So, and he almost won it. So he, he's only, you know, a couple of years removed from the Super Bowl and he can't find work. Nobody's going to pick him up. Hmm. Could there be collusion? Who knows? And so fast forward. Here's another fact. No cap. Colin Kaepernick wanted to play in the NFL. It, it throughout this process over these past few years, it has been amazing to me to read and hear people inside and out outside of sports to say, well, does he really want to play? And that's BS because anybody that knows Colin Kaepernick, or you don't even have to know him. You knew that he want what he wanted to play. You don't get to where he's gotten to in his career and then, you know, get to the level of, I don't know, just within a couple of plays of not of almost winning the Super Bowl and saying, oh, well, I'm not really not really sure if I want to play. No, he wanted to play and he made that very clear. But people were flipping the narrative. Well, we don't know if he wants to play. He wants to be an activist. You know, does he really have the passion for the game? That's bullshit. And you know it. Everybody knows it. You don't have to be a fan of football to you to understand that that was bullshit. It was never about that. It was never about the flag. The flag happened. The flag and the national anthem happened to be a byproduct of what he was doing. It wasn't the the driving motivation or the vehicle, if you will. So, again, that's those are the facts. And I, I want to be clear about the facts, because. When people tell this story or they tell Colin, Colin Kaepernick's story. They tend to leave out the facts. No cap. Right. So he wanted to play in the NFL. Uh, based on the research that I've done. And I've done a lot of research and, and following this story, you know, all these years. Here's another fact. To the fans. Colin Kaepernick never said boycott the NFL. No cap. I mean, I'm pretty sure that idea came up on social media because <laughs> that seemed to be the place where all of the craziness comes about. But he never came out and said, hey, I'm not playing, so you should boycott the NFL. Colin Kaepernick, from what I could tell, still watched the NFL. Now, here's an interesting thing. When the 2017 season began and he was not on a football team, Colin Kaepernick still he he didn't he didn't say anything you know there was no press he you know went silent he would tweet stuff but he wasn't you know he no longer had the media basically asking him questions and he was going to let his social activism speak for itself as he was waiting on a team to give him a phone call and in 2017 not one team Called him, not one team. Well, when I say called him, brought him in for a workout. 
And the same thing happened in 2018. But during that time, you know, a lot of fans, a lot of his supporters said, "Okay, well, hey, if Cap's not playing, we're going to boycott the NFL. Okay, cool. If that's what you want to do. And I've said on this podcast and other podcasts, I don't begrudge any fan or any person who says, hey, I'm not going to watch the NFL, you know, because Colin Cap until Colin Kaepernick gets a shot to play again. And my only response was, hey, I, I respect that. But I guess you're not going to watch the NFL anymore because I didn't think he's going to get another shot at playing. And if that's your choice, you know, that's fine. I, I, I always find it interesting, though. The fans who and again, I don't begrudge anybody who said that they were going to boycott. But can I keep it a bean with y'all? I don't know one fan who was financially invested in the NFL that said that they were going to boycott. And what I mean by that is it seemed to me like everybody I knew who said that they were going to boycott. They really weren't football fans. They really weren't NFL fans. So, yeah, I mean, it's easy if you watch, I don't know, two games a year. If you say, well, look, I'm going to boycott. I'm not going to watch it until Colin gets a job. You're not saying shit. (laughs) You're not hurting nobody. And again, that's your own personal choice. And I get it. But what you don't understand is that the NFL contracts are already the NFL got paid four years ago. I mean, so they're getting paid that their pay cycle as far as their advertising and stuff like that, that that money's already they already have that money. So if you say, well, okay, well, hey, I'm going to turn my TV off. I'm not going to watch. Okay. I mean, like the NFL doesn't blink. And yes, yeah, the ratings were down a little bit in 2017. You know, some people said it's because, you know, people were boycotting it and other people were boycotting because they kept showing the anthem and and, and players were taking a knee, you know, because of in, in respect for Colin. So you had protesting on both sides. But again, to those fans who stopped watching, you know, again, the ones that I knew, I don't know anybody that had any personal uh, money invested into any teams. I mean, they weren't like season ticket holders, or anything like that. If you just Joe casual fan, then, you know, I mean, NFL don't care. And, and I'll get, I'll talk a little bit more about the NFL in just a second, but that's a fact. Colin Kaepernick wanted to play. He never said boycott the NFL. You know, I'm pretty sure he was surprised and, you know, thankful for those that did. But at the same time, you know, he never said boycott for those that did it. OK, you know, you props to you. Um, The last fact that I have. And this is very, very well known. Trying to prove collusion in a lawsuit is extremely difficult extremely difficult any legal beagle (laughs) anybody that knows something about law knows that you know to try to show that there was collusion in this case uh that's a stretch because you have to have some type of documented proof or something that says you know maybe case in point like you would have to have an email or something like that that says that shows where the owner's And general managers conspired to keep Colin Kaepernick out of the NFL. And Eric Reed, who, by the way, Eric Reed was out of work. And then he signed a contract with the Carolina Panthers late in 2018. He worked in 2017 with the uh, 49ers and he began most of the 2018 season without a job and he plays a free safety he does not play the same position in quarterback as Colin Kaepernick. Uh, but he got on with the Carolina Panthers and he just recently at the time of this recording signed a three year extension with the Panthers. Um, and so that's that, but collusion, but again, Colin wasn't playing and collusion is extremely hard to prove in court. Those are the facts. So I just gave you all the facts. Now I'm going to get into what I believe to be true. And notice how I said that what I believe to be true. And and these are my facts, but you know, I can't really prove it, but 
I feel very strongly about it. First of all, the news of this settled grievance came out on a Friday, February 15th to be exact. February 15th, 2019, right? The NFL, from what I can observe and what I have observed, and I've been watching the NFL since 1976. The NFL, especially now in this social media era, they always drop the bad bombshell news, whether it be suspensions or any type of negative press. It always drops on a Friday. Always. The reason being is that the NFL is really about PR. And they know that if you drop a a bombshell story on a Friday, well, the story has legs on Friday, it has legs on Saturday. But, you know, by the time the, the, the news cycle rolls around to Monday, it's not as hot a story. And that's something that they've done strategically, at least over the last 15, 20 years. If you don't believe me, check it out. When they drop suspensions on players, when they have these bad, bad stories that have to come out, it always happens on a Friday. Always. So, you know, while this while the news of the settlement was a surprise to us, I was not. I mean, I was extremely surprised. But then when I realized, hey, it happened on a Friday, (laughs) this is right on par with what the NFL does. This is how they kick it. Um, Here's another thing that I believe to be true. And I've seen it with my own eyes. The NFL never never settles lawsuits never here's their mo the nfl feels as if they're the big bad billion dollar non-profit organization i'll say that again the nfl is a billion dollar non-profit organization right so they don't settle lawsuits what, what happens is when players sue the NFL or entities sue the NFL, they just tie it up in court because they know that they have the money to and they've got the high power lawyers. You know, they can just tie it up in court and they will eventually, you know, you have to give in. You got to you got to throw you got to throw in the towel because financially you can't keep it up. I don't know how much this lawsuit cost Colin Kaepernick. Because keep in mind, he hasn't gotten an NFL check since the end of the 2016 season. And take it from someone who has been unemployed for a period of time. And I mean, I think the longest time I was unemployed was six months. I mean, thank God I was able to keep stuff paid and keep stuff turned on, you know, but (laughs) I know how it feels. But I don't have Colin Kaepernick's money. Right. And at the end of the day, you spend money every day. And I don't know how someone I don't care how much money you got. You know, you can't keep at that pace because I'm pretty sure if he's making if he was making, let's say, seven million dollars a year, he's going to live like someone who's making seven million dollars a year. He's not making seven million dollars a year and living like somebody who makes 50,000. Just uh, people don't don't live like that. It's not practical. So, again, what the NFL does is they they just stall you out. The NFL is an organization that many thousands of their former players had to file suits, lawsuits and grievances because they weren't even able to get disability claims. The NFL was shooting down disability claims. If you don't believe me, there's plenty of documentation. Go to your Google machine and look it up. And these are players who help build the NFL as we currently know it. And these are players that are now suffering from debilitating injuries, uh, many of them suffering from dementia, head trauma, CTE, you name it. But when they go to the doctor to say, hey, I'm my shoulder is, you know, is damaged, the ligaments are damaged. The medical teams for the NFL are saying, hey, well, 
we see that your shoulder's about to fall off your arm, <laughs> but uh, we don't know that that was caused by football. Her? What the hell are you talking about? But that's how they get down. I mean, again, let me be clear. I love football. I love watching football. I'm a football fan. I watched the NFL, but I realized a long time ago, the NFL ain't shit. They're not. They are about themselves. But on the flip side, I also understand that when I'm watching the NFL, I'm watching men get paid handsomely to trade on their bodies for my entertainment. So I don't necessarily stand on some type of higher moral ground for that they're doing it for my entertainment so i care but if i'm if i'm gonna be real and i'm gonna be real with you especially you joe fan you don't care either you think you do but you don't we don't care your favorite player from 10 years ago is probably going through a lot of shit right now. You don't even know where he is or what, what's going on. You don't care. None of us care. We think we do, but we don't. And I mean, 10 years from now, nobody's going to be checking in on Colin Kaepernick to see how he's doing, how his brain is and how his ligaments are. I mean, that's just the facts. You care about the name on the front of the jersey, not the back. That's what it is. And the sooner that you realize that, the better off you are. I mean, I wish these guys well, because I, I, I know in having played the game, I understand what they go through. But I didn't I, I don't have any brain issues. <laughs> you know, I, I only played through college. So I when I wake up in the morning, I'm not in any pain. Yeah, you know, I might have a bone or two cracking here or there, but that's just old age. I'm 46 years old. Right. But I digress. But anyway, the NFL, like I said, they they will stall you out on disability claims. The NFL actually sued one of their own owners, the late Al Davis from the Raiders. Sued him. No, you can't move that team. We'll, we'll sue you to prevent you from moving this team. Can you imagine that? <laughs> He's a member of the NFL and they sued him. So no, they don't care. But getting back to Colin's case, here's something else that we don't that, that we do know. Back in the fall of 2018, many owners and general managers had to provide depositions with this collusion case, right? And toward the end of 2018, they filed a motion to um the courts and say, hey, you know, this case needs to be thrown out. It's BS, whatever, whatever. Arbitrator looked at it. Mm, I don't think so, player. Looks like they got enough here for us to at least go to court. The NFL was shocked. They were shocked because at that point, now they're like, uh oh, we got to go to war. And then another bombshell dropped. The NFL realized that while Colin Kaepernick was not receiving a check from them, he was still being given endorsement checks from Nike. Guess who the outfitter of the NFL is? Nike. So here it is. You thinking that, you know, we can just drain this guy if we just string this thing out. And the court system like, wait, not so fast, my friend. And to top it off, he's not going broke because he's being paid by Nike. Now, I don't know how much he's being paid by Nike. I'm, I'm pretty sure his Nike contract did not mirror his uh, NFL contract. So, again, now the NFL realizes, OK, well, we, we got to go to we got to go to court. So the case wasn't thrown out and the case was set to be heard, I, th I want to say, in April of 2019. So at the time of this recording, two months from now. 
So they got two months to get that shit together. And in the meantime, we don't know what happened or what was said in this deposit in these depositions. But I can tell you, and again, I'm not someone who has a legal background, but I could tell you based on the stuff that I heard on some of these owners say publicly, which that stuff could be used in the collusion case as well. They were in trouble. And again, I'll be the first to admit collusion is extremely hard to prove in a court of law. But (laughs) when you look at what some of these owners were saying publicly about Colin Kaepernick. It looked to me like he had a slam dunk. Not to mention. During the 2017 and the 2018 season. We saw multiple quarterbacks getting hurt, getting cut, whatever the case may be. And these teams, one by one, continued to bypass Colin Kaepernick for bums. Yeah, I said it. Bums. Bums like Nathan Peterman, Mark Sanchez, Josh Johnson. The, the, the list goes on and on, not to mention that there were already some bum quarterbacks in the NFL. If you want to if you want to keep it a buck, man, there's only like really. 13 or 14 good quarterbacks in the NFL, I mean, the, the top three or four great quarterbacks and then there's a little drop off. But you really legitimately only have like maybe 13 or 14 good quarterbacks. And then the rest are. eh. Now, I will admit, I think bait if and I said this before. Based if Colin Kaepernick and Colin was hurt the last time that we saw him, he dealt with some injuries. He fought back and he put up some pretty decent numbers, considering that he missed some games because of injuries. He had had surgery. I think he had three surgeries the, the previous season going into 2016. Um, But if he was as good as what we saw him last there was at least three or four teams that Colin Kaepernick could start for. At the very least, he could be a backup, right? And here it was, the NFL bypassing him, not even giving him a call for these bums. Now, as a fan, let me tell you a little secret about the NFL. They don't care what you do. As long as you're not doing something, even if you do something criminal, (laughs) if they can get around it and you can play, They want talent on the field. That's just the bottom line because the NFL is a results based business. They want to provide opportunities for people who can get them the results because they got to win and you have to win now. And so, no, it doesn't make any sense to have a Super Bowl, a a, a quarterback who had played in the Super Bowl at home, sit on the street and you're struggling with a quarterback who continues to throw interception after interception like Nathan Peterman. And I hate to bring Nathan Peterman up, but Nathan Peterman was so bad. I mean, like I'm better than Nathan Peterman (laughs) and I can't even play quarterback, but I just want to give you that. So you can kind of understand where I'm coming from. So if there was not collusion, then you would think that, Okay, well, hey, we got this guy here. We don't know how good he is, but hey, the last time we saw him, he put up good numbers. He he was a couple of years removed from the Super Bowl. Let's give him a call. Phone didn't ring. The phone didn't ring. You didn't call Colin Kaepernick at all. So, yeah, it does look like collusion to me. It does. And then, you know, I would hear some of these dumbass fans. Oh, well, he's been away from the game for so long. Yeah, he's been away from the game for so long, but it wasn't by his choice. He's still in shape. But then the Washington Redskins this past football season in 2018 signed Josh Johnson. Now, for you non-football fans or you casual fans, Josh Johnson had not started an NFL game in seven years. Seven years. And he got a job over Colin Kaepernick. Come on, man. That's bullshit. You know it and I know. It. So 
I think Colin Kaepernick had a very, very strong case that they colluded. And again, I don't know what was said in those depositions. And so fast forward to February 15th, 2019, we get word that Colin settled. Colin and uh, Eric Reed both settled with the NFL. Or oh, scratch that. The NFL settled with <laughs> Colin and Eric Reed. Because I really do believe that the NFL took an L. And so subsequently, you get on social media and people were asking, did he sell out? Did he sell out? Well, first of all, I I, I want to, before I even start talking, I want to tell you that I'm kind of uncomfortable, you know, talking about selling out amongst, you know, mixed company, if you will, on this podcast. But I'm going to talk about it anyway. Hell no, he didn't sell out. Here's the thing. Colin Kaepernick, it was rumored that... It was rumored that he was asking originally for two hundred million dollars. Right. And he missed the wages for 2017. He missed the wages for 2018. And we, if, if we assume that he's not coming back to the NFL He's going to need to be compensated for the time that he is not going to get playing football. Let's say I think at the time of this recording, Collins 31. So let's say even if he played till he was 35. He's only two years removed from football, which is the same amount of time that Michael Vick was removed from football when he went to Leavenworth for fighting dogs. And you can make a case that Mike Vick came back and was a better passer You know, once he got settled in in Philadelphia. So it's possible. I mean, hell, again, Josh Johnson (laughs) hadn't thrown a pass in like four years, hadn't started in like seven years. And he got a job. So I don't want to hear anything about rust. But, yeah, that was the question. Did he sell out? No, he didn't sell out. The objective in a lawsuit is to reach a financial point. He did that. Colin Kaepernick reached a financial point. Now, I don't know who was the first one to throw in the towel. I'm going to assume that it was the NFL. Because again, I think based on all of, if you pay attention to what was said by these owners and general managers, and again, I don't know what was in that, in the deposition, but you know, Collins lawyer said we have, quote, some information that would damage and destroy the NFL for forever. So I don't know what that is. But no, he didn't sell out. He didn't sell out at all. And reading some things on social, which I shouldn't have been doing anyway, but just reading some things on social media, my head, my head was about to explode. I actually. There was a post on Facebook of a friend of mine and somebody and, I, and I've, I've always made it my point not to argue with other people, particularly people I don't know on someone else's Facebook page. Now, if you come to my Facebook page saying some foolishness, then I'm going to check you. But this dumbass, she actually said he's a civil rights leader and civil rights leaders should die broke. He shouldn't have settled. What the hell are you talking about? Who who wants to die broke? Nobody does that. Man, it took everything in me not to cuss that lady out. I don't know who she was, but I I, I chill. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, he didn't sell out. Again, his objective was to prove that the NFL colluded to keep him out and he wanted to be compensated. Who doesn't want to be compensated? He wasn't doing this just for the culture (laughs) because the culture don't pay bills. And one thing you have to keep in mind 
when you talk about Colin settling is that during this whole time, Colin Kaepernick donated and gave away to different causes and reforms. He gave away at least a million dollars of his own money. So let's break that down, right? He's not getting a check from the NFL. He's getting a check from endorsements, but he also is still, he has a lifestyle. He has bills, whatever the case may be. I'm sure he wasn't around and eating ramen noodles and bouncing checks, but he gave away a million dollars of his own money while not receiving a check from the NFL. That says a lot. That ain't selling out to me. Because, and what I found is that most of the people who were critical of Colin, you know, settling this, this lawsuit are people who haven't done anything. I'm not going to be critical of Colin Kaepernick because you know how much money I've given to the causes that Colin Kaepernick has given to the same as you zero. I commend him for his efforts because trust me, if I was out of a job, I ain't giving away no money to nobody. Not when I still got to eat. Now, granted, Colin and I are two different financial situations and I don't know his situation. And I, I really get tired of people pocket watching and talking about somebody talking about his money. You, you don't know what his bills are. You don't know how he lives or anything like that. You you didn't make his money, so you damn sure can't spend it. So I, I get beside myself when I hear people saying dumb shit like that but no he didn't sell out he settled or better yet the nfl settled and that ain't selling out at all now it was rumored that the amount that was settled for was somewhere between 60 and 80 million dollars personally i think that those numbers are extremely low i think the number is somewhere between 100 and 125 million dollars and the reason being is that I go back to what I said earlier. I think that he he it was rumored that it was initially two hundred million dollars is what he was looking for. And he's looking for compensation for the time that he missed, as well as the time that he's not going to get unless the only way I can see these numbers being as low as they are is unless there was some guarantee that he would be picked up by an NFL team. Which at this point, personally, I don't think is going to happen at the time of this recording. Now, something can happen after this recording, but at the time of this recording, I don't think that that's going to happen. I would love to see Colin Kaepernick lining up for another NFL team because I think he still has a lot of football left in him. But I don't think it's going to happen. I think the NFL has basically said, hey, we just need to get rid of this guy, get rid of it once, once and for all. They don't want to be. They don't want to get caught up in a tweet storm by the commander in tweet. And they want to be done with it. And to, to be honest, they just lost. So I think the NFL would rather just take this L. Yeah, they're going to win in the long run. I mean, it's a billion dollar. It's a billion dollar company. They're going to win. It's, it's nothing for the NFL to pay Colin Kaepernick one hundred twenty five million dollars. You take one hundred twenty five million dollars, you split it, split that number between thirty two teams. Tell me what you come up with. Whatever you come up with, they got it. Trust me, every NFL team has it. So it's not that big of a deal. It's big. It's a big deal because they lost. But it's not a big of a deal. Not to them. I hope I'm wrong, but I, I, I doubt very seriously that. He's going to play in the NFL. And the, the 60 to 80 million dollars number, I remember the actual reporter that threw that out there on Twitter. He was the first to come up with those numbers, and he said that's what he heard that somebody thought. Really? <laughs> so it's basically speculation. And because. They have agreed to not disclose any parts of this settlement. We'll never know. There's a possibility that we might be able to see something. 
uh, because the Green Bay Packers is a publicly owned team, it's owned by the I guess the citizens of Green Bay. And when they put out their when they put out their financial report, there may be a line item that says you know what this is for, but I doubt it. They're not going to disclose that. So no, we'll never know. It might be sixty million. It might be eighty million. Again, I think it's closer to one hundred twenty-five million. And I think a lot of that is going to be contingent upon whether or not Colin plays for another team or not. But 60 or 125, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't because at, at, at the end of the day, I'm not going to spend any of it anyway. And neither are you. And I'm not going to be pocket watching. So what's next? I don't know. I really don't know. I, I, I wish, you know. Like a lot of people, a lot of people wanted to see this thing go all the way. And I get it. I would have loved to have seen it going all the way as well. But it didn't. And I'm okay with that. I'm happy for Colin Kaepernick because he stood up for something and he stood for what he believed in. And he still fought the fight. Again, donating a million dollars of his own money while not getting a check. And yeah, he was getting a check from Nike, but it's still not the same. It ain't the same as you getting your regular paycheck. And again, this is someone who has worked his entire life to get to the point where he can play professional football. You don't just walk away from that. Especially when you're pushed away or you're denied the opportunity to do so. So, no, I commend him. I commend him all the way. I don't I don't know what happens next for the people who were protesting. I don't know if they're going to watch the NFL or not. I don't I really don't care one way or the other. I mean, more power to him, but I don't I'm not sure what's next. I know that he did a lot. And one of the things that I'll leave with you all is that and I shared this on Twitter. Colin Kaepernick doesn't owe me nothing. He doesn't know he doesn't owe you anything. He doesn't know anybody anything. He sacrificed a lot. And yeah, he's got a settlement. I'm pretty sure there'll be book advancements, endorsement deals. Those things can ease the pain and everything, but that, that can't correct the death threats that he's gotten. That won't change any of the, you know. The stuff that he's had to endure, much of which we'll probably never know about. And at the end of the day, he's allowed to stop fighting when he wants to stop fighting. And again, I think the NFL threw in the towel. And if the NFL threw in the towel, you can't keep punching them if they throw in the towel. He's allowed to stop fighting whenever he wanted to, for whatever reason. And he don't owe me or you or anybody else anything. That's going to do it for me. Thanks again for checking out a special edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. A little bonus action. Uh, that's going to do it for me. So I will catch you guys on the next go round. Five G's.